Hello iStock Photo users, I'm Tim Gray. I'm a trainer for Video to Brain and also publisher of the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter. I wanted to share a little tip about cleaning up images. Sometimes you might find that you've got a great image for a particular project, but there's one element of the framing that you don't like, some object in there that you'd like to get rid of, whether that's a power line going across the sky or just some other object in the frame that you'd rather not have in that photo. I'd like to show you just how easy it is to eliminate such objects within Photoshop. Let's take a look at how it's done. This iStock exclusive image really caught my eye with the blue shutters, the blue door, and even the blue bars over the door, but I was distracted just a little bit by a couple of things. In part, there are the spots that you'll find in various places on the bricks, the stones here. For example, this spot here I find a little bit distracting. Cleaning up spots like that is remarkably simple. The approach I generally take is to add a new layer. I like to give that layer a name so I know what it's there for. So I'll double click the name of the layer and type cleanup and then press enter or return on the keyboard. And then I can simply choose the spot healing brush tool. I'll make sure that the option is set to content aware on the options bar and that sample all layers is selected so I can work effectively between layers. And then all I need to do is go out into the image adjust the brush size as needed using the left square bracket key to reduce the size of the brush or the right square bracket key to increase the size of the brush and then paint over the blemish and release the mouse and that's it you can see that the blemish is removed quite effectively and I can repeat that for any of the blemishes that I would like to remove in the image but when we're dealing with something like this lamp set against several of the stones things get a little bit more tricky. We're not going to be able to simply use the spot healing brush tool, for example. In a case like this, I like to use what I refer to as a manual cleanup approach. I will manually copy pixels from a different area of the image and then blend those in as needed. Because of the nature of this particular situation, I'm going to work in three stages. I'll get rid of the top portion of the lamp, the bottom portion of the lamp, and then the middle portion of the lamp, each individually. I'll get started by creating a selection. I'll simply use the polygonal lasso tool and then I will create a selection that is just a little bit larger than the area I'm trying to clean up, in this case the top of the lamp. With that selection created, I'll drag the selection out into a different area of the image, an area that I think represents a good mix of pixels for the area I'm working on cleaning up. I'll then click on the background image layer on the layers panel to make that layer active and from the menu bar I'll choose layer, new, and then layer via copy. I could also press Control J on Windows or Command J on Macintosh. In either event, when I choose that command, I will duplicate pixels from the selected area so that I can now move those pixels into a new area, specifically covering up the top portion of the lamp. So I'll switch to my Move tool and then click and drag in the image to move those pixels into position, replacing the top of the lamp. Of course, I want to blend those pixels in, so I'll move them into the best position possible, and then I will add a layer mask onto that layer. I'll click on the Add Layer Mask button, the circle inside of a square icon, and then choose the Brush tool. I'll press the letter D for the default colors, and then I will press the letter X to exchange the colors so that black is my foreground color and white is my background color. I'll then paint, making sure that I'm working with a slightly soft edge brush with a normal blend mode and a 100% opacity, and then I'll paint along that edge. In this case, notice that because I'm working in such a small area, I'm actually blending that effect into the lamp, revealing the top portion of the lamp again. I'll work with a smaller brush and press the letter X to switch the foreground and background colors once again so that white is my foreground color, and now I can paint the correction into the image one more time. I do want to leave the gap between the stones, so I'll press X to set black as my foreground color, and then I'll paint a little bit toward the center of the lamp and correct as needed, painting with white when I need to cover up part of the lamp and with black when I want to erase or hide some of those pixels that I copied. And that's looking pretty good at this point. I'll go ahead and double click on the name of the layer and type top to indicate this is the top of the lamp cleanup. I'll then go ahead and create a selection for the bottom portion of the lamp. And again, this is relatively straightforward. I'll simply create a selection that's a little bit larger than the area that I want to clean up. And 
Then once I have that selection created, I will move it to a position that seems to represent a good source of pixels. I think I'll go over to this relatively clean area here. And then I will click on the background image layer on the layers panel. And once again, choose layer new layer via copy from the menu. And then choosing the move tool from the toolbox, I can click and drag and move those pixels into position. Once again, in order to blend, I will add a layer mask to that layer and then choose my brush tool. And once again, with a relatively small brush, I will paint with black in order to blend the edges of that correction. Of course, this blending is really mostly aimed at having a transition, a relatively smooth transition between areas I'm replacing and areas that I'm not. You'll notice in this case that the pixels don't match in terms of overall tonality. For that, I'm going to need to apply an adjustment, specifically an adjustment that only affects this particular layer. So with my layer active, I'll go ahead and rename it right now to bottom. I can add a new adjustment layer. I'll just add a curves adjustment for this particular situation. And at the bottom of the adjustments panel, I can click the button with the two overlapping circles so that this curves adjustment layer will be placed in a clipping group with the layer below, my bottom layer. I'll go ahead then and apply an adjustment, and you can see that that adjustment is only affecting that particular area of the image. I can then return to my layer mask for that bottom layer and continue painting as needed. I think in this case I might expand the area that is visible, so I'll paint with white to reveal some more of those corrective pixels, and I can continue, of course, fine-tuning the effect in order to get these pixels to blend in a little bit more smoothly. The next thing I would do is take a look at a possible replacement for this entire brick, and that's going to be a lot easier than just trying to replace a relatively large portion of the brick. I think in this case, this lighter brick down below works pretty well, so I'm going to create a selection of that brick. It's about the same size, a little bit larger since it's not cut off for the arch, and so if I create a selection that's just a little bit larger than this brick, I think I'll have a pretty good starting point. I'll go ahead and create that selection once again with the polygonal lasso tool. And then clicking on the background image layer, once again, I'll choose layer, new, layer via copy from the menu. I'll rename this to middle since it's the middle of the lamp that we're replacing. And then I can use the move tool to drag that layer into place. Of course, this creates an exact duplicate of that brick, and I'd rather have something that's not quite so obvious. So I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, and then Flip Horizontal just to help mask that duplicate appearance so that the texture and patterns don't look to be quite as obvious. I can continue fine-tuning the position of that brick. Right about there looks to be pretty good. I could even rotate the brick a little bit if I'd like to. I'll I'll go ahead and choose Edit and then Free Transform. I'll move the mouse outside of the Transform box and click and drag to rotate that brick just a little bit so that it will fit in better. I'll press Enter or Return on the keyboard to apply that transformation. And then once again, I'll add a layer mask, in this case to my middle layer, and choose the Brush tool. In this case, I need to paint with black in order to block some pixels, so I'll press X to switch the foreground and background colors so that black is my foreground color. I'll press the right square bracket key a few times to increase the size of the brush, and then I'll simply paint with black to block, in this case, the left edge of the brick so that I'm revealing that seam in between the arch and the brick. And I could continue fine-tuning, painting around various areas here so that I'm blending the edges back into the original image. And of course, if I reveal a little bit of the lamp, I can press X to switch the foreground and background colors and clean those areas up. This gives you a sense of the overall process. I'll go ahead and switch to a copy of the image that I've spent a little bit more time perfecting, and I'll hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Macintosh and click on the eye icon for the background image layer so that only that layer will be visible. This gives us the overall before version of the image. You can see some of the blemishes and in particular the lamp. And if I hold the Alt or Option key and click one more time on that eye icon, all of the layers become visible so that you can see all of the cleanup that was done, removing that lamp and some of the other blemishes with a realistic result.
As you can see, Photoshop makes it surprisingly easy to clean up blemishes in your photos. With just a little bit of attention to detail, you'll be able to take an image that was almost perfect for a particular project and make it just right.